So on this Father's Day, we human fathers, we realize how flawed we are, even the best of us. So we want to focus on our Heavenly Father. And the title for today's message is actually taken from a very well-known hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And the first line says, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. That uh, phrase uh, deeply resonated in my soul. And that's the title we are going to look at uh, for the next few minutes. O God, my Father. In other words, we are going to talk about the fatherhood of God from the Bible. Now, what's very unique about the Christian faith is that God can be called Heavenly Father. And uh, we want to look at 12 characteristics of God the Father from the Bible. They are all going to begin with the letter P and it will be good to take down some notes because this will help you in your relationship with God the Father. The first thing that we can say about our Heavenly Father is that His love, the love of the Heavenly Father is peerless, preeminent, and permanent. Three words. Peerless, preeminent, and permanent. So let me read for you two verses from the Bible. 1 John 3, 1. How great is the love the Father has lavished upon us. I love that word, lavished. You may want to underline it in your notes or Bible. That we should be called the children of God. The King James Version has it this way. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Meaning, the love of the Heavenly Father is out of this world kind of love. You can't see that love here on earth. It's a totally foreign love. The love of God the Father for his creatures. Totally foreign love. In fact, in my notes, I have also written three I words down just to help me understand all this. The Father's love is incomparable. Incomparable. <laughs> you can't compare it with any human love. Incomparable. And the Father's love is irresistible. Irresistible. He has showered this love upon us, even though we don't deserve it. And uh, his love is very intentional. That's the third one. Intention, intentional. Meaning, he took the initiative. He took the initiative to reach down to rebels like you and me and to pour out his love upon us. So, Jeremiah in 31.3, these words were spoken by God himself to the nation when it was in deep darkness. And look at these words. I have loved you with an everlasting love. That's where I get this word permanent. God's love is not short lived. It is not up and down. It is very consistent. And it is eternal. It is permanent. I have drawn you with loving kindness. And there you get that word irresistible. God draws us to himself. It is not that we go to God, but it is God who, exercising his love, draws rebels like us to himself. I don't know how many of you noticed it. Psalm 103 verse 8 says, our God is abounding in love. And the word abounding means to overflow with love. My goodness. I can put an arm in right now and finish the sermon. This is more than we can handle. God's love is an outpoured love. It is a lavish love. His love is showered upon us. His love is intentional. 
his love is irresistible his love is incomparable and that's the love that draws us to himself in a relationship personal relationship everyone who is on the world is not a child of god they are creatures of god only when we come to trust the lord jesus christ to be our personal lord and savior do we receive the very life of god into our soul we are adopted into his family and that's when we are called the children of god so a question we all need to ask this afternoon is am i in the family am i experiencing this shower of love from the heavenly father so that's number 1 fearless preeminent permanent love of the father now we move to number 2 the second characteristic of the father heavenly father the power of the heavenly father he is all powerful so i am reading again jeremiah 32 verse 18 <laughs> and there are three words that captured my mind as i read this verse oh great and powerful god whose name is the lord all mighty great powerful lord god all mighty uh, one of my uh, favorite speakers on back to the bible always referred to god as the lord god almighty so we come to a heavenly father whose love is poured out on us and whose power is available to us his power is available to us so that raises a question how do we know that he is a, a god of power the heavenly father is a god of power at least two ways one is creation the heavenly father created this world and in this universe you can see the awesome power of god at his will take the loftiest mountain take the deepest sea the deepest canyon and they are all evidences of his awesome great power <laughs> you look at a raging sea and you see the power of god so you see it in creation very visible you just lift your head up to the night sky and you see stars that cannot be counted <laughs> and the bible says that god created them all simply by speaking the word so we see it in creation but we also see the power of god in the miracles that he has performed both in uh, biblical history and in church history for the past 2000 years we have seen the power of god in his miracles so for example when uh, god the father delivered the children of israel from egyptian bondage there were 10 plagues that were sent and do you know what those 10 plagues are they are all judgments on the egyptian false gods and by it god was showing both to israel and to the egyptians my power is far greater far superior than the so called power of false gods so 10 different times god exercised his power to reduce egypt to rubble literally and then you know the story <laughs> once the children of israel were delivered from egypt the egyptian army pursued them and they come to the red sea dead dead street what do you do now and god exercised his power and the red sea parted in two and the children of israel were able to walk through and when the egyptian army decided to pursue them the waters closed in and they all ended in a watery grave so those are just a few examples you can discover more examples as you read the bible he is the god of power so in your weakness in my weakness we can tap into the awesome power of god to be sustained 
in what you and I are going through in life. Right? All of us are going to have our trials. This morning at the church I was at, a 16-year-old girl, my goodness, liver transplant, uh, brain seizures, talk about problems. And so we prayed for God to exercise his power on that little girl, only 16 years of age. So no one is exempt. <laughs> it's not just the older people, even younger people, even children. A 10-year-old boy, I said this before, a pastor's son, has an inoperable brain tumor and uh, the doctor said there's not much we can do. So what do you do in times like that? In utter weakness and helplessness, you go to the God of power and you tap into his power so that you can be sustained as you go through those crises in your life. The power of the heavenly father. Number three, the pardon of the heavenly father. This heavenly father loves to dispense forgiveness. And the Bible says we are all sinners. The Bible says we are all guilty. The Bible says we are all condemned because of our sin. So where do we go for forgiveness? We've got to come to the heavenly father. So we read in Psalm 130 and verse 4, With you there is forgiveness, therefore you ought to be feared. And in the passage we read, Psalm 103, it talks about who forgives us all our iniquities. Now, God can't just forgive sin. His justice won't allow that. And that is why God sent his son, one and only son, the darling of heaven, as the song puts it, to come to this earth, to live among us, and the Lord Jesus lived a sinless, impeccable life, and then he went to a cross and died as the Lamb of God, paid the penalty for all our sins, he was buried, on the third day he rose again from the dead, authenticating his work on the cross, and now any sinner who comes to the foot of the cross, kneels at the foot of the cross, acknowledges their sin, and asks the forgiveness of the Heavenly Father are instantly forgiven. <laughs> your sin record is clear. Your slate is clean. You can start all over again. That's the beauty of the God of the Bible, the Heavenly Father, the pardon of the Heavenly Father. The word forgiveness means release. So it's not just that my sin uh, record is cleared. I'm given the power to live an overcoming life, to live a life where I am set free, liberated. I don't have to be addicted to anything. I can live an uh, overcoming life. Just this week, a mother called me. 45 minutes she was talking about her son. One addiction to another addiction. She's desperate. She's helpless. She's in fear. What do I do? And I had the opportunity of talking to that boy. And I pleaded with him. I said, don't waste your life. Don't ruin your life. Right? Repent. Turn around. Come to the Heavenly Father and receive his forgiveness. So God's forgiveness is uh, uh, not only that our sins are forgiven, but his forgiveness is that we are liberated and we are set free from all addictions. So that's number three, the pardon of the Heavenly Father. Now we come to number four as we talk about God the Heavenly Father. Number four, the peace of the Heavenly Father. Peace of the Heavenly Father. So we are looking at Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Look at this verse. What an amazing verse this is. You, referring to God, will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. <laughs> Peace is so elusive, isn't it? Look at the number of wars that are taking place in the world today. I'm a person who keeps in very close touch with what's going on in the world because I want to live in the world of reality. 
And if I just take one country, Sudan, that has been having a civil war now for the past one year, entire villages that have been massacred and children on the brink of starvation. Do you know that all over the world, 181 million children under age five are in starvation. While you and I live in a land of plenty affluence, we are going to enjoy a super meal at the end of the service. If we stay long enough, uh, there are 181 million children who don't know the taste of bread. So in that kind of a world, what's this talk about peace, right? Very elusive. But uh, peace is not just the absence of conflict. Peace is needed when my heart is restless. And all of us have gone through times, maybe some of you are going through it right now, when your heart is restless. And uh, there are plagues that are worrying you. You can't sleep at night. You wake up in a cold sweat. And uh, you long for that inner calm, inner tranquility. You want your heart to be an island of peace, even though it is surrounded by a sea, a stormy sea. The Heavenly Father grants us His peace. And look at the way it's described. Perfect peace. Actually, in the Hebrew, it is peace, peace. Peace multiplied. So the Heavenly Father is not just giving us peace, shalom, wholeness, wellness. <laughs> he is giving us peace multiple. Peter picks up on it in his letter and that's the exact word he uses. Let peace be multiplied to you. Generally, when I pray for people, I have said this before, end of every prayer, I utter these two phrases. Let the peace of Christ rule your heart and let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Wonderful blessings. You can bless people with when you're talking to people, when you're sending those email messages. The peace from the Heavenly Father. You may be here today, very restless, with no peace in your heart. You are not right with God. You are not right with fellow man. You are fighting with people broken relationships and the Heavenly Father invites you to come to Him and to experience His peace so that when you receive the peace with God it extends to human relationships and you can have peace with fellow men. That's number four. Number five as we continue to look at the fatherhood of God in the Bible, number five the protection of the heavenly father. I wrote in my notes two things about the world in which we are living in. We are living in a dangerous world. <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know how many of you are aware of it. Folks, today we are talking about the possible use of nuclear weapons. This is not just shooting bows and arrows. Nuclear weapons. And more and more nations are coming into the possession of nuclear weapons and biochemical warfare. You let loose a virus like what we experience in COVID and you know the end results. Right now they say in China they have discovered another virus far more deadly, more potent than uh, the coronavirus. And they have kept it under a tight seal. I hope they do. Because if that gets released, you want to go through another corona? So that's the world we are living in. Dangerous world. Run by a few dictators. And just the press of a button can destroy this world many times over through nuclear warfare. I fear for the younger generation. I mean, I have my way out. <laughs> but look at all these children, the younger generation. Look at what they are going to grow up to. Dangerous world. Not only a dangerous world, but a very deceitful devil who is lying to us by the day. And this uh, devil is telling us, you know, you're young, you don't follow God, just live your life any way you like, just live it up, right? But he never tells the payback. All sin has got consequences. The devil never tells them. He hides it. 
till it is too late. Right? Never forgot the day I met my first young fellow with HIV. Remember HIV? And uh, he looked at me and he said, I have got HIV. I instantly backed away. He was absolutely petrified. I backed away. And uh, he told me his story. How innocently he was walking down the road. Someone called him to a corner, injected with him, uh, him with a needle, and that was his first exposure to the HIV virus. So, folks, you have the deception of the devil <laughs> who says, hey, leave it up. Do this, do that. So we need protection. So, John 10, 29, among many verses that I could quote, double security. The Lord Jesus said, no one can kidnap you from his sand, nail pierce stands of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus also said, no one can kidnap you from the Father's hand. Double security. Double security. <laughs> no one can hijack you. No one can grab you from the hand of the Lord Jesus. And no one can grab you, hijack you, kidnap you from the Father's hand. So we can rest easy. Why? Because of the protection of the Heavenly Father. Every single day, I claim Psalm 121 and Psalm 91. Every day. I prayed for myself. I prayed for my son and daughter-in-law and for my little mercy, with whom I had a delightful time this afternoon. And uh, <laughs> I held her in my arms for the longest time. And my son came to me and said, Dad, how's the pain? I said, son, you can't put a price tag for this. You hold your granddaughter to hug her, to kiss her, to sing to her, to read to her, to allow her to put your nose and ears and whatever. What a beauty. So, <laughs> I pray that we will be kept safe in this dangerous, deceitful, fallen world. Protection from the Heavenly Father. Now, number six. Provision of the Heavenly Father. He provides. He provides for the birds, he provides for all the animals, <laughs> and he provides for us. So look at this verse, Philippians 4.19. I'm going to read it, make sure you're following it, okay? There's one word I want you to circle and take a highlighter and highlight it. Let's see whether you can pick up the word. My God will meet some of your needs. One person showed their eyebrows. Let's write that again. I think all of you are thinking about the need. Right. My God will meet some of your needs. Okay, come on. I need uh, you all to be more vocal. Burn up some calories in order to enjoy the food. Let's try that one more time. Okay. My God will meet. Ah. Circle the word on. All needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. <laughs> so what are your needs? It could be material need. It could be financial need. It could be relational need. It could be emotional needs. Whatever your need is, whatever your need is, the Heavenly Father is there to provide for all your needs. So why worry? Why worry? So I uh, came across this uh, uh, little uh, breakdown of Philippians 4.19. This part of the sermon is not original with me. I picked it up from a magazine I read, but I thought it was beautiful. When you go home today in your Bible, write this down. Break it down. Write it down. You will have to go back to it many, many, many times. As you grow up, right? The provider by heaven. Who is the provider? It's not the Bank of Canada. They keep increasing the rates, right? My provider is my heavenly father. The promise shall supply. Words of absolute certainty and assurance. The father doesn't say if you... 
live up to my expectations, then I will provide. He never says that. He is saying that he is committed to meeting all my needs. So I returned from my Sri Lankan trip, five weeks. We collected a fair amount of money to be used over there, used it all, <laughs> and we came to a zero bank balance. So I prayed and said, Lord, this doesn't look too good. The bank account is all zero. Can you do something about it? Just a talk with the heavenly father. Within 24 hours, within 24 hours, a lady called me and she said, Pastor Benji, I've been trying to track you down for five years and now finally I got your phone number. I've been collecting money for five years for your Sri Lanka missions. I want to put it in your hands within 24 hours. Can you come and meet me at this place? I will hand it over to you. And folks, it was a pretty large sum of money. Same day, my, one of my close relatives who had seen all the pictures of the Sri Lankan trip, he sent me an email and said, my wife and I decided we have to give some money for Sri Lanka. How can we send it? I said, e, -e transfer it. And they sent exactly half the amount what the lady had given Folks, what I'm talking is out of experience. <laughs> I'm not talking theory here. Be not theory. I looked up to my provider, my heavenly father. I said, I said, the coffers are all empty. Lord, can you do something? Can you fill it up a little bit? And within 24 hours, through two totally unexpected sources, the coffers began to be. The provision all your need. Name it. Your need could be loneliness. Your need could be emotion. Today, as never before, we are talking about mental health. Do you know that? Mental health. Emotional problems. Issues. So, even that need, the Heavenly Father says that He is there to heal and help. The purse, <laughs> uh, the writer of this particular article very hesitantly used the word purse. We would use the word wallet. So what is this purse that God has according to? According to means not out of. Out of means the account is going to get depleted. Every time you withdraw some money from your account, it's depleted. And the bank lets you know, hey, this is the amount that's remaining, but not the bank account. God does not draw out of. He gives according to his riches. And his uh, uh, bank account will never run. It will never run. In. So, as great as his riches are, that's how great his ability is to meet our need. Come to the heavenly father. Talk to him. Let him supply. Let him meet that need. And the person through whom all this is mediated is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in Christ. What a verse. We'd love you to memorize it. Write it down in your Bible. Break it down. Go to it from time to time. Whenever you're having your needs, whatever the need is, and look to the Heavenly Father. The provision of the Heavenly Father. Now, number seven, I've got to warn you, it's not palatable. The pruning of the Heavenly Father. The pruning. So the Heavenly Father has a knife in his hand and thank God it is not a butcher's knife. A butcher's knife is meant to kill. Psst. Whenever we go to camp at Hanover, uh, we are in a farm and you see this hefty, hefty uh, cattle. They are eating morning, noon, and night. So one day I asked uh, the owner, so, so what happens? So he said at the end of the season, we get good money out of these cattle. They are headed to the slaughterhouse and we get big bucks. So I said, Lord, I'm thankful I'm not a cow. <laughs> Happily eating now, <laughs> only to end in the slaughterhouse. So the, 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 the knife the Heavenly Father has is not a butcher's knife. It is a surgeon's knife. 
why is it a surgeon's knife? Because the surgeon has got to cut in order to heal. He cuts in order to heal. That's the knife in the hand of the heavenly father. So the pruning chapter of the Bible, John chapter 15, I'm reading the first two verses. My father is the gardener, the Lord Jesus says. He's the true vine, we are branches, and the heavenly father is the gardener. <laughs> now watch the language. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Ask any garden. Any branch that doesn't bear fruit, it's good to chop it off because it's uh, sucking up all the nutrients, not allowing the other branches to produce. It's chopped off. No fruit. Psst, 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 thrown into the fire. Now let's keep reading. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruit. I showed you a picture of a 60-year-old tree that was so pruned so deeply, so deeply, it almost seemed that the tree would fall. And I was assured in one year's time, that whole stem would grow back again and the tree will be healthier, stronger and more productive because of the deep pruning. So right now, right now, some of you may be going through that pruning process. And you're feeling the pain. Pruning is not uh, uh, easy. It is very painful. <laughs> Just a little pin prick brings pain. That's why I hate going to the doctor. They love to prick needles into you. I went recently uh, to my dentist. I said, doctor, what are you do? No needles, please. And he said, no, no needle, no needle, no needle, no needle, no needle. He rubbed some gum and put it in. And thank God, without needles, he did what he needed to do. So, the pruning of the heavenly father. If I'm not productive, if godly character is not being produced in me, he is going to subject me to the pruning process. It's going to be very painful. You're going to be saying, ouch, it hurts. But it's for my good. It's for my good. Number eight, the presence of the heavenly father. The presence of the heavenly father. Look at this verse. Deuteronomy 31, 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. Wow. What more do you think? When you and I have to go into uncharted territory, the Father goes before us. He prepares the way. He clears the obstacles and the hurdles so that we can walk safe. He goes before us and he is with us. By our side. He goes before us and he's by our side. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid. Don't be disturbed. You may not have any human who will accompany you to prune. But you can be guaranteed of the presence of the heavenly father. You can almost sense him by your side. Walking with you through the journey of life. I love the story of Joseph. You know the story and Genesis 39. You can go home and underline this in your Bible. Three times in Genesis 39, all the verses are up on the screen. Three times it says, the Lord was with Joseph. Sold by his family, abandoned by his family. For no reason he is thrown into prison. He is forgotten in prison. Joseph maintained his integrity. The heavenly father was present with him. And when the opportune moment came, he was promoted to be the prime minister of Egypt. So you can be guaranteed of the presence of the heavenly father if you choose to walk with him. If you choose to walk with him. The choice is yours. You can go through life on your own. Or you can go through life with the heavenly father accompanying you. That choice rests with you. Number nine, oh my goodness, so you would want to put a star by the side of number nine, the plans of the heavenly father. He has got plans for your life. I hope all of you, we don't necessarily use the word plan, we use the word goal. Right? I hope all of you have goals. Short-term goals, long-term goals. 
I have got plans made till next year, almost the end of next year. I have made my plans. If you don't have plans, your life is going to break. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can take you anywhere they choose to take you. If you don't have plans, if you have plans, you can stand up and say, no, I can't come there because I've got plans. I'm committed. I'm going to walk this course. Right? So what are your plans? Now the verse quoted for you, <laughs> I'm sure it's a favorite of many of you. Next to John 3.16, this has got to be the quoted verse in the Bible. Jeremiah 29.11, there God is speaking to a nation that is on the verge of judgment and destruction and exile and look what he says. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. It, it, it doesn't need any explanation. It speaks for itself. God has plans for you to bless you, to enrich your life spiritually and uh, to ensure that no harm comes to you and to give you a wonderful golden future. A few days ago, <laughs> I was reading in my quiet time and this verse leapt off the page and hit me between my two eyes. It was like being hit with a two by four. Psalm 138 verse 8 from the New Living Translation. Look at this verse. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. So I can decide to go my way or I can decide to go God's way. This is uh, my part, you better sign it. God says no. I have got plans for you. Far greater than the plans that you have written down. If you sign to my plans, together we can make a difference. God is going to work out his plans for my life. Whether it be your years, your middle age years, or for me in my the golden years of my life, <laughs> in Tamil we call it the Tata years. Right? God has plans. Number 10. The pain of the heavenly father. The pain. Human father has got emotions. He deeply feels hurt, rejection. In Genesis chapter 6, before God sent the flood on earth, look at what it says about him. Okay, look at the verse. I have underlined uh, three words. The Lord was grieved. His heart was filled with pain. For I am grieved that I have created him. This is what we call a broken-hearted God. The Heavenly Father is a broken-hearted God. Why? Because of our sin, our foolishness, our rebellion, our waywardness, He is broken-hearted. He is broken-hearted about how you are wasting your time. He is broken-hearted about how you are wasting your resources, how you are foolishly trying to live your life in your own strength. He is broken-hearted. He is grieved. The heart of the Heavenly Father can be grieved through you and through me. Just like human beings. When children rebel, like this mother who talked to me for 45 minutes, broken-hearted mother, sobbing. Why? Because of a wayward child. And God's spiritual children, when we become wayward, when we fall in love with the world system, spend extraordinary amount of time in the world, we have no time even for the heavenly father. We want to give him 15 minutes a day. What a struggle, isn't it? What a struggle even to give him 15 minutes a day. And we would keep up into the wee hours of the night, studying, 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 because nothing wrong with it. But the problem is totally imbalanced. Totally imbalanced. Right? So how was your life this last week? How much of time did you give the Heavenly Father? Did you just tip your head to Him? Did you give Him quantity, quality time? To be in His presence, to listen to Him, to worship Him, to honor Him. Right? When I don't give Him that time, He is broken. 
Number eleven is a very comforting truth about our heavenly Father. the patience of the heavenly Father. <laughs> he is incredibly patient with us. He puts up with our nonsense. He puts up with our foolishness. I mean, I often wonder why is it that I didn't die before my time? All the crazy things I have done. He's patient. Look at the three verses I've quoted for you. He is patient with you, not wanting any to perish. <laughs> That's why I'm giving you opportunity to repent, to get your life sorted out, to get your life aligned with His will, plan. Two Peter three fifteen. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. God is patient so that your relationship with Him. God was patient with me for 20 years before I surrendered my life to Christ in 1973. This month I'm celebrating 50 years in ministry. I came into ministry in 1974. But how patient God the Father was with me. And then uh, 1 Peter 3.20 God waited patiently in the days of Noah. You know how long it was? 120 years. That's how long it took for Noah to build the ark. There was no home hardware to which he could go to pick up stuff. Just with his family, he's building this massive ark. 120 years. And while he's driving in the nails, he's telling the people, there's a flood coming, there's a flood coming. Repent, get right with the father. Did the people listen? No. They all said the heat has got to know our poor fellow. He's lost his head. He's lost his marbles, as we would say. God was patient. 120 years before the flood came and the whole world was destroyed. And finally, number 12 is a subject by itself, the promises of the Heavenly Father. <laughs> Somebody said there are 7,000 promises in the Bible. I have not counted them, but over the two summer months, if anyone takes on the projects, and uh, writes it down, uh, we would give you uh, a gift. Uh, Brother Sam is going to Sri Lanka. We will bring a good gift uh, for you if you do all 7,000 promises. Okay? Let's see who comes up with the challenge. Looking at your faces, uh, you are you're telling me let Sam have his gift. <laughs> I am going to have my barbecues in the summer. What do you mean sit down and discover the 7,000 promises? So 2 Corinthians 1.20 For no matter how the Father has made, they are yes in Christ, meaning they are all fulfilled in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And 2 Peter 3.9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Talk to Abraham. 25 years of waiting, he got the promise he's going to have a child. To 25 years before uh, Isaac was born, that's a long time to wait. Long time to wait for a child. But he waited. He made one terrible mistake and we have the whole Middle East problem because of him. So these are 12 wonderful truths about the Heavenly Father from the Bible. Now, what should our response be? Let me give you five. Five responses to the Heavenly Father and again they all begin with the letter P. The first response is to prostrate myself before him. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name simply means God's name must be held in high esteem, honor. Don't take God's name in vain. A lot of people do that. They take God's name in vain. The name of the Lord Jesus often is used as a swear word. Never do that. It's a sin. So we uh, honor him. We, we, we prostrate ourselves before him. That's the meaning of the word worship. <laughs> Today we have equated the word worship with singing. Singing is just a tiny little component. Worship means to bow down, to prostrate, like what the wise men did in Matthew chapter 2, before the Father in heaven. Uh, last week, uh, you know, at this age, it's not easy to kneel. If I kneel, it's not easy to get up. <laughs> but uh, this particular morning, I was driven to my knees. 
I just couldn't resist it. I just fell down on my knees and I went into a beautiful experience of worshipping, prostrating myself before my heavenly father. And I said to myself, I need to have more such experiences. There I am literally driven to my knees. So that's your first response, to reverence him, to prostrate myself before him. Secondly, to praise him, to praise the heavenly father, to sing and shout his praises, right? What an amazing God. How can we be silent? How can we be tongue-tied? We need to praise the heavenly father for who he is and for all what he does. Response number three is to please sing. The Lord Jesus said in John 5, 29, I always do the things that please my heavenly father. Every day as I do life, I should be able to say I have pleased my heavenly father. All the decisions I have made today, the way I have spent my money, the way I have spent my time, the way I have spent my resources, they have all brought pleasure to my heavenly father. He is not grieved with me. He is happy with me. He is applauding me. Well done. Well done. Good choice. Good choice. You have cut down on screen time today. Good choice. You didn't play video games today. Good choice. Good choice. You didn't hang on to that phone. Good choice. Do you bring pleasure to your heavenly father? Please sing. Number four is to proclaim him. Make him known. Make known his love, point number one. Out of this world kind of love. love. Supernatural love. Abounding love. Overflowing love. Showered upon us. I always say to myself, a day is wasted if I have not talked to one person about my heavenly father. I have opportunity of doing that through the phone. Sometimes in daily interactions I have with people. I always want to introduce my heavenly father into the equation. Proclaim him. Proclaim him in a very gentle way, in a very loving way, in a sensitive way to be able to introduce my heavenly father into the equation. I was uh, very impressed. Uh, <laughs> my, 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 my classmates at school, we have, a, we have a connection. I mean, he's going back over 50 years. And uh, recently somebody died. And so many of them made comments. And one comment was, hey guys, the Bible is true. It talks about three score and ten years. Our friend died in his early 70s. It's the Bible is true, Psalm 90. And this guy thought, but he knew Psalm 90 and he quoted it for all his friends. Shame on me, I'm the guy who should have done it. He beat me to it. He beat me to it. Otherwise, what, what are the responses? What to do? Hello, gone. No. Huh? Hello, gone. Huh? R I P rest in peace. is not Bible. R I P is not Bible. Rest in peace. What does that mean? <laughs> this fellow is a scoundrel. Now he's resting in peace. I better disturb the peace. I better throw some stones. <laughs> Very foolishly, we embrace stuff without even understanding it, right? So proclaim him, proclaim the heavenly father, bring him into the equation. And the final one is pray to him. What friend we have in Jesus, oh, what troubles, griefs we bear, take it to the father in him. Talk to the heavenly father, like our child would talk. My granddaughter Granddaughter's language is all blah, 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 blah. I don't understand a thing. But she's communicating something. She's communicating something. So you may not be verbally flowery. Doesn't matter. Go to the heavenly father. Talk to him. This is your child. Today is a messed up day, father. I can't bear this day today. It's all dark and gloomy. I don't know how I'm going to go through this day. <laughs> Plead with the Heavenly Father. Pray to Him. Ask Him for His help. He's the God of power. Talk to Him. Before you 
invite somebody else to pray over you, which is a good thing to do, you first talk to the Holy Spirit. So these are the five responses. Right? Prostrate before him, praise him, please him, proclaim him, and pray to him. And that's what we are going to do now. We are going to pray to the Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being such an amazing God to us. Your love is incomparable, irresistible. Your love is so intentional. We thank you that you care for us. You go before us. You stand by our side. We thank you that you have plans for us. And may we fit into your plans. And may we be bold to talk about you to others. Every single day may we bring pleasure to you, Heavenly Father. Forgive us our sins. Grant us that peace that you have promised, perfect peace. Look into every heart this afternoon. Meet us at our point of need. And you have promised, whatever our need, you will provide. To you be all the praise and glory, now and always. Amen. Let's all stand and uh, sing the closing song. desires as you choose to delight in him. May the Heavenly Father guide you to always do his will. May the Heavenly Father guard you from all harm and evil. May the Heavenly Father grace your life as you face hardships and trouble. And may the Heavenly Father be glorified through our lives. Amen, and please be seated. Announcements for this week. So, uh, every Sunday, we have church at 3.30. It's going to be in person as well as Zoom. So, if you're not able to join, please join on Zoom. Uh, we have prayer meetings 